Hello! If you follow me on Instagram or something and that's how you saw that I posted this, then you know that I have a almost 12 month old little boy. Um, and if you don't know me and you just randomly came across this video, hopefully there are some people out there that see this. Um, I. Uh, I almost have a 12 month old little boy, so I thought that it would be fun to just um, put this on video, have it for the future um, to look back on uh, because my memory is terrible <laughs> and um, in 20 years from now or 5 years from now or whatever, I um, want to be able to have all of the details. Um, you know, recorded so that I can look back on it. So anyways, um, let's just get into this. So um, Warner's um, his due date was on the 20th of March 2017. Um, so we went in for my 39 week checkup and you know, Ethan and I didn't really have a birth plan uh, per se. We obviously wanted, you know, a natural delivery. Um, I'm not against any medication, so I was about that. I'll get into that later, but obviously we wanted a natural birth, but we didn't really have any specific things other than that that we like had to have or really wanted or whatever. So. We really were kind of just at the discretion of um, our doctor. We trusted her, we really, really loved her, um, and we kind of were just like, you know, you're the professional, whatever you think is is what we will go with. So, um, so we went in for that doctor's appointment. I was still, um, and I had been for maybe a week or two, I had been at a centimeter dilated and that was all I wasn't effaced or anything yet and she said you know I went ahead and scheduled your um, induction for Wednesday the 22nd you know if you hadn't then this was a Monday I was due on a Monday and she scheduled the induction for Wednesday if I hadn't already gone into labor she said if you go into labor I'll see you at the hospital if you don't then I'll see you at the hospital for your induction so um, so she just went ahead and scheduled it she didn't really talk to us about the day or anything so um, you know that was fine and so and and I kind of had already mentally prepared myself for just any situation I know people get so set in their ways of like this is what I want my um, what I want my labor and delivery to look like and and a lot of times it just doesn't turn out what you what you think or what you are planning for so I I didn't try to um, I just tried to keep an open mind and be mentally prepared for anything that could happen so um, uh, my pregnancy was very similar to my mom's pregnancies with both my brother and myself and so I kind of just figured that my delivery would be very similar as well and she did get induced with both my brother and me so I figured like this baby is not gonna come on time and I'll probably have to get induced so um, the 20th rolled around and no signs of baby um, I had lost my mucus plug like two weeks prior to this, but nothing else had happened and no, um, you know, nothing other than just Braxton Hicks. So then the 21st rolls around and, uh, still nothing. So then the 22nd comes, it's Wednesday, um, and we go in for the induction um, at 3.30 p.m. Um, and 
we do you know just all the paperwork everything that's just typical um, they come in they you know they finally got us in a room and that was probably around um, five ish and between like five and five thirty they just asked me all these like family history questions everything um, like that and at around 5.30, the, um, another nurse comes in to give me my IV in my hand. And oh my gosh, that was, that was the worst, probably one of the worst parts of the entire situation. It hurt so bad. Um, she came in to give me my IV and my vein and I have good veins I mean they're typically always like sticking out so I thought it would not be a big deal but my vein that she was trying to um, put the needle in was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and she's like oh this this vein is gonna blow and I'm just thinking like what I don't know what that means but that does not sound good so um so she takes the needle out and she's like okay well um, we'll just try again in 15 minutes and I still don't know what your vein blowing means but um, nothing terrible happened so I guess it's it's not that big of a deal so anyway she came back in and um, she ended up being able to get the, the IV in the second time after a little bit of work it was not fun though, it really, really hurt. Um, so anyways, then they came in, uh, the doctor that was actually, my doctor was not on call that night. Um, it was another doctor at, at that practice and she, um, she came in at around six and gave me a dose of the um, Cytotec, which if you don't know is to soften your cervix to hopefully thin it out a little bit because I was still only at a centimeter, um, centimeter and a half dilated. So um, she she did that. So before she inserted the Cytotec, I had asked because um, I felt like I was having some contractions that I don't know. They I didn't know if they were contractions. Everyone says you know you're gonna know when it's the real thing and it's not Braxton Hicks but you know these felt different than Braxton Hicks but they just weren't that they weren't that bad so I I don't know I just didn't I didn't know so I so once they hooked me up to the monitor to monitor the baby's heart rate and the contractions I asked um, you know am I having contract can you tell me if these are actually contractions because I, I and she, you know, the nurse told me, yes, these are definitely contractions, um, and they're pretty big ones, and they're they're pretty close together, a few minutes apart. So I don't know, maybe I was gonna go into labor just on my own, anyways. Um, okay, so once um, once my doctor inserted the cytotech, um, or the doctor inserted the cytotech, she said, you know, you can't get up for. An hour, you just need to lay here, and you can't um, go to the bathroom or eat anything for the next hour. And I was just like, Ugh, okay. She was also told, telling me that I couldn't shower anymore until after the baby came. And I really wish that somebody would have told me that beforehand because I for sure would have showered. So, anyways, I laid in bed, rested for the hour. Then Ethan and I ate dinner, and. At 7 o'clock she came in and gave me the um, Cytotec um, orally or whatever. So um, so then we just kind of hung out for the next few hours and tried to get some rest just because, you know, I, I didn't know how long labor would last. I didn't know when the contractions would really start to get bad. Um, I will say that I knew right off the bat, um, when, but earlier when I said natural labor, we went into natural labor, I did not mean like all natural, no honey. Um, I just meant vaginal versus cesarean. Um, obviously if our doctor said cesarean is what we need to do, 
then by all means do whatever you got to do to get that baby out and he be healthy and I be healthy but um, but I you know I didn't know how long it was gonna be till I wanted to get an epidural which oh girl you know I wanted to get that epidural I highly recommend it um, but I'll get into that in a little bit anyways so we just tried to relax for a little while until um, it was um, time to get the epidural and so like I said earlier they were planning on doing the Pitocin at midnight but I was having really strong contractions very close together um, on my own without the Pitocin so they wanted to um, they decided they wanted to wait um, to do that and so she told me you know we're gonna wait till probably 3 a.m. Or, or so to do the Pitocin because it was just gonna be too the contractions would have just been too much for baby to handle so um, so around 11 o'clock at night I I was like I was having I was in so much pain from these contractions. I don't know what I was dilated. I think it was around two centimeters or something. Like I wasn't very dilated still, and I, um, I was telling Ethan like you have to call the nurse and tell her like I need to get the epidural soon because I did not want to. I know the contractions are gonna get worse when I start the pitocin, and I was like. I can't handle it. I don't want to do this. I just want the epidural. So um, Ethan called the nurse in and they started me on the IV. Um, I, there's like a bag of liquid. I don't know how much it is um, that needs to get into your system before they can give you the epidural. So I, um, you know, I had the nurse come in. She hooked me up on the IV and about, I, I mean, I don't know how long that took. Maybe, um, an hour or something and then they um, they told me okay we're gonna have uh, the anesthesiologist come in and it'll take about 15 minutes to get your epidural working and then you know you should see some relief and you know my the contractions were just like in my back like it just was so painful and I, I just personally I I wanted to enjoy this process as much as humanly possible and just being in pain for, this is just my opinion, like being in pain for no reason, like if, I mean I understand sometimes epidurals don't work, but, and if that was the case then okay, but I was sure going to try to get the epidural. Um, and so, so the, the anesthesiologist came in, Ethan had to leave the room. I know some hospitals let the spouse be in the room with you and some, um, or your partner or whoever, mom, they let them be in the room with you, but, um, but our hospital didn't. Um, so I guess because it's like a sterile environment or something, I don't know. So he left the room and the anesthesiologist came in and um, I had the sweetest nurse ever. Um, she like stood there and like hugged me the whole time I was getting it because I was so scared. Like I was so scared. Like I don't think I've ever been like more scared for anything in my life like than having them do the epidural. When they explained what it was during our like birthing class like a month and a half earlier, I was Oh, I was so scared. So anyways, I was really scared to get this and the nurse was so sweet to me and I, um, you know, they raised the bed up and I was hugging a pillow and I was leaning forward and she was just like, like telling me, oh, it's okay, you know, and um, telling me like what to do and everything. And she, the anesthesiologist, um, did did her thing. They told me like it's just gonna feel like a bee sting and I, I have never been stung by a bee so I did not know what to expect at all um, but it did not hurt. It was like the tiniest little prick and then I felt like a new woman. Like I remember Ethan coming in and being like wow I don't even I don't even recognize you. you're completely um, different than you were 15 minutes ago. Um, so Mm, that epidural. 
was everything. <laughs> so I I hadn't been able to sleep at all up until this point, and so I um, I finally was able to get some sleep until they decided to do the pitocin. So I you know this was around 12. 30 or something they gave me the epidural and then from then till 3 30 I was able to sleep it was amazing um, that is like all the sleep that I got practically the whole time we were at the hospital but anyways so um, she came in at 3 30 a.m. and they started me on the Pitocin I was feeling you know, I was feeling great. I did not feel the contractions um, in any kind of painful capacity. Like, I could still feel what was going on in my body, but it just, it was like it didn't hurt. It was just, it was, it was very weird. The epidural was nothing like I thought. I thought it was just going to be like completely numb, not be able to feel or move anything. But that's just not what it was. It was like I could still kind of feel everything, but there was no pain. So it was just very odd. Very odd, but good, because I wasn't hurting. Um, so then um, I just kind of was hanging out. I think I was, I, I think I did sleep for a little bit more actually after she started the Pitocin. I did, I slept for a couple hours. And I, then, my, um, then my doctor was in the hospital then that morning. She came in and <sighs> woke me up at about 6.30 in the morning, I want to say. Maybe it was closer to 7. And she um, was like, you know, I'm going to check to see how far you're dilated, and then I'll probably come back and break your water. So she, um, she felt and said that I was like 5 or 6 centimeters dilated, so I was really happy to know that I was progressing a little bit. Um, that was another thing. <whistles> Getting checked to see how dilated you were. Mm. Okay, that that and the um, IV, that was the worst part. Ooh, I hated that. So once I got the epidural, that was a lot better as well. Um, so she checked and then she was like, okay, I'm gonna like, come back and break your water or whatever. So then she came back to do that in, in a couple minutes and she said, oh, your your water has, it, it already broke. It must have just broken or whatever. Um, so I was kind of like, oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't notice. Like, and she was like, well, um, nothing has come out yet. Like the baby's head is kind of acting as a cork right now. Um, and it'll come out when baby comes out. So uh, that's where we were. And then a nurse came in um, at about 8 o'clock. So at 7, when the doctor came in, I was at 5 to 6 centimeters, she said. And then at 8 o'clock, when the nurse came in, she told me, I'm going to check you, and I was at 9 centimeters, so I progressed a lot in an hour, and um, so then I was starting to get nervous because I was like, oh, like it's about to go down, I don't know what to expect, um, and she was like, you know what, if you feel a lot of pressure, don't do anything, I'm going to be right back, I'm going to go get everything, and then we're going to start pushing. And um, so I was like, Ooh, you know, I was scared. I didn't. I don't. I think everybody's probably got to be a little bit scared because you just don't know like what is about to go down when you've never had a baby before. So um, she goes and she comes back, the nurse, and it's just her in the room, and my um, mom was in the room, and Ethan was in the room, and so. Um, then she's like, okay, we're going to start, you know, we're going to start pushing, which was a whole nother thing that I did obviously didn't know how to do. And, um, so I was kind of scared. And so, um, so, you know, my mom's got one leg, Ethan's got the other leg and we, we start pushing. So, you know, she tells me, you know, we're going to 
count, you know, you're going to start pushing, you're, well, we're going to count to 10, you'll do that three times, like in, in increments of three, and so, you know, I'm like, okay, I can do this, and we start, and like, nothing's really happening, and she's telling me that the baby is not liking it, and we, I really, you know, we really need to get the baby out, and I'm starting to kind of like have a panic attack, because I'm just like, what do you mean, like, is he okay? And, um, so, you know, and then she's telling Ethan, you know, can you pick up that phone over there and dial this number? And so Ethan's like, okay, and he like picks up this phone, he's dialing this number by the bed, and then they didn't answer, and then they, she's like, can you call again, tell them that we need the doctor? And so she, you know, gets a hold of the doctor, and then finally my doctor comes, and it's probably like 8, 15 at this point or something like that. Oh, no, no. It's it's 8.30 by now because I pushed, um, or maybe it's, it might be, no, it's closer to 8.50 at this point. So um, it's almost 9 o'clock. I've, I've been pushing for, I don't know, a, a, a while now, like 15 minutes or something like that, and she's not happy with what's going on, so we get the doctor in there. And she's like, don't worry, everything's okay, like, baby's fine, we're gonna, you know, start pushing again in a minute. Um, so, you know, she gets all her stuff ready to go, and then um, I start pushing again. They kind of tell Ethan and my mom to move aside, and some nurses come in, there's like five people in the room, um, you know, that besides Ethan and my mom there were like five other people including the doctor and you know the nurses hold my legs and they're telling me oh you're doing a good job but I I don't feel like I'm doing a good job and so I'm pushing I'm doing what they're telling me and it's really hard because I you know they're telling you push through your your buttocks but I'm like I I thought I was but apparently I wasn't so you know the first um, from when the nurse came in, probably the first 20 or 25 minutes of pushing, I did not feel like I was making any progress at all. And the doctor um, tried to do a, like a suction on Warner's head, um, but it like kept snapping off. Like she tried to do it twice, and so then she just kind of <laughs> gave up on that. And um, and I just kept pushing normally and. Finally, I was kind of getting the hang of it. I was feeling when the contractions were coming. I kind of was getting in a better rhythm um, as to like what I needed to be doing. And um, so I, I don't think he wanted to come out though, because he was, it felt like he was, like it was hard to breathe because you know, your legs are way up here. You have a big belly. There's a human inside of you. And it felt like he was just like hanging onto my ribs for dear life. Like he did not want to come out. And, you know, so I was pushing and pushing and finally about 45 minutes into pushing, um, he, he came out and it was the craziest thing ever because, you know, it was like such a, it was literally such a relief and, you know, he came out and he wasn't really making, um, much noise. And the nurse had kind of freaked me out earlier because, you know, she was saying, oh, he doesn't like this or whatever. Even though the doctor told me he was okay, like, it was just until he started crying and, like, making noise. Even though they were like, he's okay, he's okay, he's breathing, he's just, just crying, he's not crying. Um, you know, until he really started crying and they put him on my chest, it was just kind of nerve-wracking until, you know, I could see, like, he's okay. And he was um, the most perfect little thing I had ever seen like um, it's just crazy is it's it was the craziest most wonderful experience um, that I had ever gone through and I don't take one minute of it for granted because I know um, I know how how difficult it is for, I, I have a lot of people in my life that it's been very difficult for them to conceive or it took them years. Um, so I know that it's really hard. I mean, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing.
But anyways, I, I don't take it for granted. I absolutely um, cherish every second of it. So it was a pretty quick one for me. Um, for a first baby, I mean, I got to the hospital at, you know, I got in a room at 5 p.m. and they started me on the Pitocin at 3 30 or 3 a.m. the next morning and we had a baby at 9 38 um, a.m. that same day so it was pretty quick for a first baby from what I understand I don't know so so anyways I hope that you guys whoever may have come across this video I hope that you enjoyed it hopefully it wasn't too crazy long or confusing um, or anything like that and I don't know what uh, what the next video might be or how frequently I will post a video but um, but anyways yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you later